So this is a good, uh, sorry, Jamali RPG. So the, what are the structures that vulnerable is not more? Uh, with this vulnerable structure, it will be immediately following this, following this wall. Okay, so this, you know, good, so good, you know, that this, all the structures are okay, but the base, base has been collapsed. So, so what is the base uh, foundation construction is very important. So it is, it seems, that it is not in the Olympia. So in this, you see, 2015, some uh, some photos of the Nepal. So these structures in hilly area, but how they have been constructed, structure very uh, thin wall and beam and column. So these structures have been also collapsed on the survey, and structures are very old. So we have to be think that if you are living in an prone area, and if you are not uh, taking the no uh, retrofitting or whatever the structures are there that will be not be not um, removing or demolizing so that structure may be dangerous and that may be so but this now now from uh, we have to come to our national center for seismology activity now you know that over, whenever the earthquake occurs in our indian subcontinent within three minutes or less than uh, five minutes we can give this earthquake information and precisely where it is. So these are the seismic stations, about 150 seismic stations across our country, length and breadth of here. So these stations, whenever the earthquake occurred, this station is enough, but uh, if these earthquakes are occurred in a remote area, very small magnitude one. So our purpose is that very small, less than 2.5 magnitude also can record, and that recording we can communicate with our stakeholders like different government agencies or some state disaster management team on this location. So this is Northeast India, so 20 telemetric stations are there. So whenever an earthquake occurs, so these information immediately come to the Delhi of our central headquarters and there we have a uh, robust system so they are in state of the art structures and they are so that earthquake information that waveforms are come and automatic system we can be able to record and you know, we can be able to find out the after parameters. And that after parameter immediately we have to disseminate to the user agency. So these we have it is coming automatically, but for sometimes we have to be also checked manually because we have a duty officer, also we have then the expert geology geophysicist. So by experience we can also sometimes say that maybe some magnitude minute differences or some left to length with some minor differences found so we have to be ready and then we have to be this information so these are the earthquakes so these after after continuous monitoring system it is a real time we are near to real time we are getting this so whenever an earthquake occurs suppose in, a, in this earthquake occurred in the in the city area so if this magnitude that center is the highest intensity and then it is the epicenter as you go away from the country decreasing. So this is you can say which are the area is the most vulnerable so that the state government or rehabilitation work may start on that a particular area and they have to find out what are the problems for that area. They have to take this photograph or uh, they, they have to find out what are the disasters, what are the damages, damage scenario that they say they have to try to find out. So they have some system, line departments with them, and they have some CPW with different, different, different medical teams and all that things. They have to be try to be the mouth in love with mm -hmm. And we have also the, the app. This app is very important. I may request or ask to all of you that you may install this Bookomp app so that whenever you in the mobile, you can find out that some the after rocker you will find the hard area, hard magnitude, what is this. So this type of information in your pocket you will immediately can understand this. Okay. So so this is the just system recording system and data dissemination system we have. So this this type of information we have in, some, uh, in the National Center for Seismology Dissemination Station. And so this is the earthquake occurring. So magnitude, so this yellow and green means time, red is mean very recent, and then as the, so this is about um, one month within this. So within this that we have to give the date, 
we are a man and then time 90 but the magnitude of the earthquake and what the local location so these are in continuous process and this uh, earthquake information are given in this hour inside will need to go in time so now earthquake resilience risk resilience structures and specific micrometer is very important because you know that many foundation failure many so that engineers they try to construct the structure how to construct we cannot blame to others so they have they need a need a base ground motion that is not with them so we have we are, we are scientists and engineers if we cope if we work closely uh, with each other then i think there may be some solution or some problem whatever that you that may be may be reduced okay so that soil response study is very important that we have the seismology study probabilistic seismic as a map generation is very important geotechnical geophysical investigation so these are the is a big topic so this type of work also we are doing and i we have done for seismic environment city delhi and to the map scale map scale is very important that what scale you are able to do suppose Delhi you say seismic zone 4 but when we are going for finite domain for seismic hazard analysis so we are finding that no it has been further divided into some small pocket of equal intensity or ground motions of the ground activation there so so we have need to macro donation and micro donation and equal donation whatever the themes we have to be incorporate and give this information for the organization planning for future development so that so that everything will be will be that if there suppose, suppose that the rain is there we have a very good rooftop so we are not uh, we have no problem about the rain so similarly if the earthquake occur no problem if your uh, if your structure is uh, really earthquake resistant and we also think that whatever the structure we have to construct that is that depend upon the building design philosophy so that which magnitude we have to construct our structure so we should not go for the higher magnitude like seven or eight magnitude we have not go below so most frequent moderate magnitude like five by five so that magnitude may be occurred anytime and we also know that longevity of the structure is maybe 100 years so maybe 100 years recurrence period earthquake may not occur that places so we have to focus on that model magnitude magnitude earthquake so that your structure may be constructed so that that your structure should not be collapsed at all. so based on that it has to be so now you know that recently few structures also collapsed without any earthquake so these are the new construction somewhere old construction somewhere the construction activity is being sound side by and then next buildings is collapsing so this type of phenomena happened in many places in Delhi. So reported many places like Gurgaon and some Karulbad and some other places. So this, why these are there? This because we know that what if the structures are old. First of all, you have to know structures are old, and that structures, whatever the existing, and then try to their just building above also there. So what is the base? Base is the need. So these are the very important things we have to be known. And so, you know, this, this is the certain area area to people like him. So, unfortunately, people are killed on that place. So, uh, so, how the National Disaster Response Force are working that place. So, by seeing, if you if you see the actual, so it feels that you, you will make some planning that you have to feel, yes, you need to reconstruct your structure or strengthen our structures for planning. So this is another you go down uh, places there are so some uh, new story building but collapse some part of this. So this is also very very problematic. So engineering plan and all the things is very important to construct this places also. So this is also the fourth story building collapse in Karolbad. So this seeing the situation you see that I mean like it seems like a major earthquake, uh, big earthquake of that, but there is no earthquake. But this will be So, <coughs> so what is our aim? Need to do the probabilistic seismic hazard analysis. I told that this is the seismic zone four, but you know, based on the probabilistic probabilistic hazard analysis at the rock level, at the shear velocity 760 meter per second, so that it has been remarkable to places. So these 500 kilometers surrounding whatever the earthquake sources, faults are taken and then probabilistic based 
my self and my student has been generated recently and this has been, uh, has been given for publication to the pure and applied medicine. So these, these are the, as per the return period of the earth. So return period 100 years, then 225, then 500, and then 2475, uh, and then we have to 5000, sorry, then 1000, and then and then 5000, and then it has been going to be that the 0.5 per year, I mean, 10,000. So what is the purpose? Suppose we have to construct for the nuclear power plant. So we have to do for this type of ground motion. So we have to be find out that this type of ground motion should be uh, should be in this case. So rate is maximum and then this. So this the current return period means as the return period of the earthquake will be means block or impending earthquake. So if it is a for a long duration, long time after it occurs, so you have to think that you probably speak deep ground acceleration may be more for that area. So hey, so these suppose you are going to construct your residential normal residential structure, you have to go lesser return period. And if you are subcritical structures, monuments, some like uh, <clears throat> different structures like high range buildings, skyscraper buildings, so you have to be for higher return period or some nuclear plant or some hydro city or power plant, so there you have to do potential. So probabilistic map of the moon. This, this is very important. This is very important. And then what are the soil layers of our trees? We have to investigate by the geotechnical and geophysical method. And then uh, safe software is available. So these include ground motion if you take and safe ground motion, safe software, and then you uh, have to incorporate all the layer parameters, horizontal layers, and then you find some output. So that type of study we have done for PGH. So this is the holistic microgenation method that we have to be earthquake catalog as we need. And then you have to be that uh, how the, uh, the the geological and geotechnical information you are taking from that drilling and then soil sample and water analysis, shear modular strain, shear velocity, and all these parameters. So this is easy to say, but when you go for doing some practical thing and all the things, and it is a tedious job. And so yeah, and then integrating all this information will get a thematic map. So thematic maps, it means hazard maps like CRF velocity, how changing liquefaction potential. So as there is no liquefaction occurred in India, maybe we are this further. But if like mega earthquake, this type of earthquake and liquefaction occurs, so we have to be thinking, oh, this is the liquefaction. So we have not focused on liquefaction study. So we should not. So we have to be uh, we have to be focused on all the other parameters in the and site classification, pre ground activation, predominant, geology, geomorphology, nitrogenation map, and then landing and building topology and all that things we have to be prepared. And if this type of information needs to be in linear architectures, they can build your environment in the environment. So these are the steps of the safety microgenation. So these are the steps means first you go for the, what are the seismically uh, vulnerable. So that seismically, how we will be give you map. So then you have to geotechnical investigation and then trial information. And then you have to go for the step-by-step -step map generation for the different layer parameters. So now you know the soil amplification that I already told that in the plane six soils are there and whenever an earthquake in, in, in Himalayan belt or some Nepal, the long duration trap, that seismic motion, in our Indian plane, and even Calcutta, it has been just a lot of damage so far. So ground fissure, sometimes water come out, liquefaction phenomena, sometimes uh, damage of the structure. So all those structures are same construction, materials are same, but buildings, you see, this uh, structure construction is same, 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 but it is rock. So there is nothing happened. So here you see that we will propagate and there is no nonlinear behavior takes place rock. So shear strain is not changing. But here it is nonlinear, but when it is coming to the soil surface, strain changing. So strain changing, volume changing, volume changing means your structure foundation become weaker and then pull up the structure. So these characteristics we have to find out what are the soil thickness, what are the shear velocity, and what are the peak ground acceleration on the surface. How, whether this soil needs to be removed or not, what type of structure you are trying to construct, 
So these are very important for me. So this is the example of our wind area. So hazard index map, after integrating all the things, we see the detection, peak ground acceleration, and then CRA velocity, geological, geomorphological, peak ground, peak frequency, peak amplitude, and all the things. So all the things we see integrate, and then we have find out the hazard index map means low hazard 0.2 and then moderate and then high and then high. So we, when you construct for the high hazard zone, we have to be perfect about this. So we have to be cheap over there. What type of structure we have to construct and what ground motion needs to be taken for that area. So similarly, uh, many uh, safety microdimension has been uh, done uh, so far by the Minister of Art Sciences. Okay, so uh, this is the Jabalpur area. First, 1997 double plaster worker, and then uh, so salt uh, pressing has been taken, and they have identified which area is much more vulnerable for low hazard, high hazard. So, this is the first testing microdimension brought out by Department of Science and Technology. On that time, India Meteorological Department was under uh, PhD, and this type of work has been done, and seismology work has been done in the past. So, after that, that that some extra model support given to the other organizations and manual has been prepared for such mechanization. And then in many cities, because we cannot do alone to all this work. So many research organizations, uh, this extra model support the government of India, Minister of Arts, Minister of Arts and Women, and they are trying to find out that other index map for that city. So so a particular manual, particular guidelines has been given, and based on that guidelines, they are following all the things and they are these these things are monitoring um, properly by advisory committee and this advisory committee has been set up by 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 Minister of Art Sciences and they are just taking routinely and they are trying whether if there is a modification that they are going to modify or it may be considered as a requester. So similarly that um, seismic microdimension of uh, shipping this, this has been done 2007 and 2000 million some aspects of it, but some literally it has been some uh, revision has been taken place because the city is a hilly area. So hilly area you cannot predict properly that uh, that that the what could be the microdimension for that because hilly area some structure may be collapsed due to the landsliding and that place. So that is also very important uh, important. So revision of this is also important. Uh, once the case studies we have. So that Guwahati city is also we have been done and that I will. So these all these are done through external support from um, organizations like IIT, IIC, uh, some other academic institutes also. <coughs> and this way, uh, Kolkata recently has been done by you know, Professor Nath has been done by IIT Prakut to IIT Prakut. So this is he has also uh, taken uh, this survey and has been identified that what are the uh, possible, uh, possible hazards for us. Now, uh, Ministry of Arts has also taken a flagship program that 30 cities safety microdimension has been done to, by our department. After detailed safety microdimension done for Delhi, Jabalpur, and some other area like I already told. So these are the places that uh, in, uh, that are undertaken and some cities are taken. So so that by this way, if we, that the city disasters may be reduced, so that detailed hazard parameters, detailed peak ground acceleration with its return period of the earthquake is achieved and its purpose then solved. So that that our structure may not be collapsed. Like Japan, they have they have done this survey and they have whatever the structure they have. They have minimum losses. So maybe losses, but minimum. So that that is building should not be collapsed immediately. The sustain for time and the, so that evacuation rescue evacuation that may take place and then people may be may be evacuated from the place. So so that a life losses or economic losses will be minimum. So that is the our process. The smart city, smart city infrastructure communication is very important. So the DP development that the government of India, Honorable Prime Minister also speaking in this area, that the ten point agenda of disaster risk reduction, Sindhu framework he has been adopted and he will in this area. So 
Now, apart from this tsunami, also tsunami, we have the Minister of that I am uh, working at the Minister of Art and Science, National Central Technology Minister of Industry. So uh, we have the tsunami warning center center at Inquest. So Inquest is Hyderabad. So 2004 after tsunami earthquake, so government of India has taken initiative that uh, that if the next tsunami comes, so what is our alarming? What should we get? So a uh, tsunami center has been established in Inquest. So whenever now. Earthquake. We have 17 stations on the land. Uh, we have these earthquakes. Immediately, that 6.5 magnitude if it broke out, it has been passed to the inquiry. So we have the such type of information system, communication system. We have passed to them, and they try to simulate with this uh, water uh, tide and all the things, uh, water waves, tsunami waves, and then they try to model it and what will be the uh, wave, tsunami wave, or uh, inundation to the coast, maybe possible or not. They have to run. So nearest post, they have to try to find out. Then if the nearest post, some some uh, wave highway heights are there, then we have to go think about the our post because our post is far away. It may be two hours take time to reach the water, which is the Indian. So system uh, we have that uh, 2007 impasse has been that is so 18,000 coastal locations type of um, survey real time they have been. Runoff survey has been done and observation sea level variations, uh, deep sea and coastal have been uh, they are there and robust communication and distribution system there and data center support system is also there. So, warning because they, they have last years in uh, doing like this in men to seven and above occurred, so tsunami may be occurred. So, within 10 minutes, we have to give that yes, that is possible. So, so that uh, like, like, like cyclone. And the post is within about 24 hours, we can say. But tsunami within two hours or um, hours, we can say that that may be a um, then may reach to the, to the post. So within 10 minutes after the earthquake, if the magnitude prevalent to six and above occurred under the sea and favorable area, zone area, um, so so that we have to give some warning to the to this coastal area. So based on that, we just uh, uh, just a bit more So, multi hazard vulnerability maps and prepare real time tsunami, magnetic modeling report. So, so, these are the coastal areas of vulnerability, like cyclone, also same coastal areas also. So, after precursor studies also going on, like you know, that uh, like Quina uh, deep drillings are going on. So, now 1965. So after so called so in Pina Dam. So what is the reason? Sometimes some say that it is a new uh, seismicity, sometimes a tectonic. So shallow after it is there. It's within five kilometer, less than five kilometers. So we have to be drill and find out what are the reasons they need because small to modern magnitude still and they are. So if like other country has been done, similar type of work and doing this, they are their endeavors to do this. That uh, to find out the, what are the possibilities for the earthquake. So our government of India has also taken initiative to Minister of Art Sciences that uh, that that type of work is done. So so Bhutu is also uh, has been done some building at Himalayan area and Chilam Plateau and Pine. So this type of geophysical observation, multi geophysical observation parametric can give some that near feature which can predict the earthquake. So if the prediction of the earthquake is possible, then it will be that means we are trying to understand what are the possible for the earthquakes. So monitoring of various earthquake precursors, very important that seismicity pattern. So a particular area, you know seismicity patterns, what are there? So is there a seismicity or suddenly drop or or uh, impending earthquakes are there? So seismicity pattern you have very important gap theory is there. So crustal deformation systems also is a good. And gravity anomaly and then electrical density surveys changes or electromagnetic the perturbations are there, so water level changes. So water level fluctuations sometimes takes place before the earthquake. And geohydrological changes, so hydrological parameters, okay, hydrochemical parameters like red on gases or some other ammonia or some different gases may sometimes uh, we uh, sometimes that is find out in the water country. So, preliminary analysis of this data have provided useful lead to the ongoing tectonic process. So, this tectonic process means sometimes maybe tectonic or some um, local phenomena, uh, some that we may understand. 
ఇండియా from rural to the urban areas that progressive microgenation, what are the hazard, level of hazard uh, that are associated with the city. So to unveil this uh, the hazard is very important by seismological, geological, geotechnical aspect. So then we have to begin nanogenation. Nanogenation means 10,000 to 1.5,000. So this means Taluka level or some rural village level we have to be told in this area. Then Pico Junition, one to one thousand scale. So scale means very important. Means uh, in 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 the map and to ground condition. So if you want to go for village level, so we have to go for seismic femto femto junition. So this type of femto junition means one to one thousand or five hundred scale. So that is our goal. But it takes long time. So until unless all the institutes, all the academies have become those of um, uh, to work with these, it is difficult to because it is challenging. We cannot wait for this also because after it will be not wait when you come. So we have to do this. So disaster management, you know, so the two things: disaster, pre-disaster, post-disaster. So disaster go on happen. What you do? So you know that I am also um, giving time for presentation on this. Uh, India mean table top exercise in Hindu earthquake in the response system. So most of the states are just giving some idea that if the earthquakes occur, so what the next state they have to be put in place, like in Himachal uh, Pradesh uh, and Srinagar, so in, uh, even uh, in Haryana and some in Uttarakhand. So most of the states, northeast India, Tripura, and um, Arunachal Pradesh. So these states I have already completed, and and this is this has been done to the National Disaster Management Authority. So they have a team, and they are going to mock the team, and then they are saying that if the earthquake occurs immediately, so what is your plan? What is what is your thinking? What how to you the response for that? So so you have to be think that that you sometimes you walk it up and then talk to maybe you are, but your communication failure. So, what is your aim? Uh, what your objective? So, all the district collectors or state secretaries are they are involved and mock drilling and by this way we were just enhancing our knowledge and capacity building and by this way maybe maybe disaster reduction will be required. So, pre-disaster mitigation is very important, like such a micro-mitigation and such and these are the very important. And then disaster, then what is response? So this survey we have to be taken it. So we go very well. So the uh, scope scope of the disaster management. So disaster management has a broad scope. It's well known that to understand the disaster management, it is so prevention, land use, building, building code. So land use and building code we have to follow and infrastructure structures and evacuation places. Or if you have centers, you have to be planned with here, uh, and then critical infrastructure. So critical infrastructure is very important, important, and preparedness. So contingency planning is very important, and response and recovery. Disaster relief, fire relief, disaster relief, fire disability. So most of the no, many many issues, many challenges with the disaster occur. What we do, we are unable to understand. So that time is very crucial, critical for us. So, so, so we need to work on that way. That table top exercise is very important. Table top exercise, uh, so, as I said, after the new response system, uh, mock drills and some preparedness for the line department. So that should be they should be active when that 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 uh, any uh, after the disaster occurs in that state or state government. Uh, so state secretary or disaster state disaster management that should be important. And then detailed seismic zoning map preparation is very important because if your seismic zoning map and prepared structure is uh, strengthened, then damages will be less. 
so damage relays means you will be not panic on that time also for for your uh, response so then early earthquake warning system early earthquake warning system is very fast advanced thing means if the earthquake distance earthquake like himalaya occur and then urban ship in delhi so how can you how can you give some warning warning means so time is very important so p and s minus time is when p and s time is important for that places but you have to be think that what type of um, uh, uh, warning can be so that high speed train or some um, many operational system like fire uh, fire control or some um, many things those who are who are which are vulnerable immediate effect for the earthquake may be occur so that can say so aerodrome and everything you can stop and can do something like this so building code should be followed also uh, building code it is very negative building code followed uh, that is very important and you know that about 80 percent of the structure in our country are non immune land so you have to focus that building code is very important so that so that otherwise whatever the minimum earthquake magnitude 5 or 5.5 may be just a maximum you know that uh, 1993 that um, lakur earthquake about 10000 to feel have uh, magnitude 6 so this type of minimum moderate magnitude so feel the huge losses so building code not followed that structures are very narrow this type of structure so these are building code if you not followed or if you are engineer or our government are not taking it there is some problem for that uh, and this is the challenge in south africa and then probabilistic seismic hazard analysis like scientist you and if you knowledge is a lot and if you find out that probably the ground is and what is the seismic hazard and also need close cooperation with all stakeholders and so we cannot blame each other that this stakeholder is not doing this or that we have to be closely cooperate between them and and we can build a better environment uh, disaster free country near future so by this way thank you for your question thank you lakshmi over to vinita madam uh thank you so much sir that that was a, a wonderful presentation on the topic uh, there are certain queries that are raised by the participants uh the first query is from um, the first query is from kunal joshi he is asking that uh, what are the types of earthquake predicting models and how much are they significant sorry what are the different types of earthquake predicting models and mm. how much are they significant as as per scientific concern we are able to predict the earthquake but earthquake precursors are there okay so precursors means before the earthquake if some phenomena like quiescence seismic gap fill so you have to be think which area you are so each in that area you have to be detail multiple physical parameters observation you need to do because you know one example 1975 china they able to say that they predict the earthquake and hiking earthquake they can predict and next year 1976 they tell you this and about more than 1 lakh people have seen so prediction is easy to say but uh, as you know that uh, our earthquake observation is very recent that 1960 onwards were instrumental period and earthquake rate per recurrence period is more than 100 years so 500 years so we are unable to characterize the earthquake so we are trying to understand now this earthquake phenomena and then time will may come that we can we can predict or our next generation can predict the earthquake so it is very difficult at this moment uh, it is a challenging job also to predict the earthquake <clears throat> okay so uh, another question is that uh, uh, is there an expo- explosion catalog available just like earthquake catalog and is there any python module that is available for statistical seismology Yes, yes. Statistical seismology means you have a catalog, earthquake catalog. What are the magnitude? What the date and time event of the earthquake occurred? So, as so far, India Meteorological Department, uh, 19, no, uh, 1505 onwards earthquake catalog are available. So, even now, in the website also, if you give the earthquake date, time, event, and latitude, you will find when you can um, download that data. And 
art work statistics means Gutenberg Richter relations are there. So you have to plot the number of magnitudes and and the number of earthquakes and magnitudes with respect to the particular area. Then you find a particular area, a particular pattern. So that is the statistical pattern that is this that in that session parameters, A B value, log in the day minus BM. So this type of Richter, Gutenberg Richter has been generated and and that is very important also for probabilistic safety hazard analysis or so, so many hazard analysis. So, so that way you can find out some statistical analysis. And catalog, after catalog, you can prepare for your, your interested area to do better refinement of safety hazard, uh, like you can take from USGS, okay, United States Geological uh, Survey. Or, so, yes, sir, USGS. Yes, USGS. So many old sites are there. EMRC or some ISC Seismological yes, Center and then Japan Geological Agency. So, so if you integrate all this data and and magnitude, and you have to be homogeneous, make it homogeneous because sometimes some has been calculated local magnitude, movement magnitude, surface magnitude, body magnitude. So you have to be homogeneous, make it homogeneous so that it may be in a single magnitude scale and then find a uniform catalog for that is so you can do your for country you can do your for interested area like Delhi area or some northeast area where you are interested or for such area or some south india peninsula city whatever it is but depending upon earthquake ability earthquake magnitude ability because seismic network station earlier uh, it has been just um, increased just 2000 onwards okay so India Meteorological Department earlier, then International Center for Security for increasing strengthening. Uh, so as much denser network will become, the smaller magnitude you can catch. So so that we not miss any magnitude also. But earlier it has been missed because that that purpose was not to Okay. <clears throat> so another question is from Suman Kumar Cha. He is asking that what will Bihar has to plan as a state for disaster risk reduction? Yes, uh, Bihar actually state disaster. You know, they have already um, Bihar state disaster management uh, authority there, and they are also doing some seismological network system. Some I depend on what the area of local pockets are occurring, but this way it is not possible to solve holistic matter uh, until unless we have to be doing detail uh, detail work. Like so seismic magnification, I told you, because Bihar is not only hazard from earthquake, but the flood is very important. Because you know, in the in rainy season, now July, August, again, Kosi rivers and now that flood will be there. And it is much more vulnerable than earthquake also, because most of the people are um, uh, flood victims for that. Place. So these type of hazards are Bihar is very common. So earthquake is one of them, but like cities, Patna and all that, in such a we are doing. So this such data and map comparison to the future plan of this city may be, may be improved for the hazard, hazard point of view. So by this way, we can do this. But it is not a, uh, I told you that you cannot do alone this work. You need a holistic matter and maybe the scientists, engineers and the architecture come together and have to be understand that and you have to be make better hazard map for that. So, so one last question is so one last question is there. Uh, the question is that our mm -hmm. synthetic accelerogram, mm -hmm. synthetic accelerogram, and artificial accelerogram same. And what is the best way to eliminate aftershocks automatically? Mm -hmm. After shock elimination, we cannot do because the artificial and synthetic, whatever you are saying, synthetic seismogram, you can generate by only, only green functions are there. So, this is the advanced study. Green function means so small magnitude after shock card in particular places, and then it's uh, subsurface layers are there, velocity models you have known, and then it is convolution in fixed places and recording as in the seismogram. So, it is a small one. Now, this small one, how to increase? So the same force and size. Okay, now increasing the magnitude. So what could be the uh, that amplitude amplitude as well as as uh, duration will be improved. So this is the model actually synthetic can generate 
and by this way you cannot eliminate the uh, after sales. But after sales activity, so when you are plotting that after sales main source and then some after sales particular particular area, so that after sales will be followed the main source. So it will follow for two to three months for that area. So we have to be removed for that. <clears throat> Okay, thank, thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was very well explained. And uh, now we'll move on to the next technical session. Uh, the next technical session will be taken by Dr. Reena Kumari. She's an assistant professor from School of Environment and Sustainable Development, CUT Gandhi Nagar. Uh, the topic that she will be speaking about is on drought disaster, challenges and mitigation. Um, as far as the brief is concerned, she's uh, uh, completed a PhD from JNU uh, New Delhi in 2011. And her main area of research is isotope hydrology and microwave remote sensing. Also published six book chapters and 40 research articles in international journals. She has also been awarded with DST Fast Track Young Scientist Program. And she has also completed four research projects with various national and international funding agencies like DST, SERB, and SEC NASA collaboration, NASAR mission. Uh, I would request all the participants to raise as many queries as possible. That will be taken after this technical session. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Uh, Mama, are you there? Because uh, you're not audible. There seems to be some technical issue. Uh, I would request all the participants to kindly bear with us for a few minutes uh, before ma'am starts her uh, technical session. And in the meanwhile, I will also like to inform all the participants that uh, after this technical session, there'll be a, a well decreed well session that will be taken by the uh, vice chancellor of the COG Gandhinagar uh, University. Yes, ma'am, you audible now. I'm audible. Are you able to see my presentation? Uh, no, ma'am, we see your white screen is there uh, as of now. Uh, like some white screen is there. We can't see the content of the uh, presentation. <clears throat> One minute, please. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and also there are certain queries raised by the participants. They are asking that uh, if PPTs will be uh, given to them. Uh, yes, they will be given uh, post collection from the resource persons. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, the participants are requested to kindly raise as many queries as possible uh, so that the session becomes lively. <clears throat> and interactive. And uh, the validatory address will be taken by Professor Arvai Hiranmi. He's Dean of the School of Environment and Sustainable Development. After that, uh, we'll be having the vote of thanks. And uh, post that, uh, the three days online uh, training program will be concluded. So, uh, Reena, ma'am, uh, are, are we, um, are you there, ma'am? Yes, I'm here, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm not able to share right. my screen. Screen. Uh, no, we can see your screen is there, ma'am. Screen is there. Yeah, we can see the screen. Yeah, and now it is as visible to us, ma'am. Yeah, it is there, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now I am presenting drought disaster challenges and mitigation. Already, uh, Abhishek sir has presented uh, lots of information on agricultural drought. So very, very little things are left uh, for me to present. Um, I will. Uh, uh, is uh, are you able to see? Yes, ma'am. So basically, this is. Uh, uh, one of the biggest disaster of the 21st century 
it threatens the global food security causing environmental societal and economic problems and it ranks first in the degree of severity length of the event total area extent and social effect compared to the other other hazards so basically um, uh, is ranked first in the degree of severity it is very important because uh, it extends for a longer time Uh, next is the I'm showing the global uh, drought risk map. Uh, you can see that how the uh, drought is affecting the Southeast Asia. You can see the uh, along with the India, a large part of the Southeast Asia is basically getting affected by the drought. Uh, next. Uh, I, I, I want to say that in the Southeast Asia, like India, is uh, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, and they are saving the, uh, they are facing the detrimental drought, which is affecting the water availability, agricultural, agricultural uh, uh, activity, as well as the livelihood of more than 1.5 billion people. Droughts are uh, over the Southeast Asia. It is mainly driven by the. It is mainly driven by the failure of the summer monsoon, summer monsoon, which is a lifeline for the millions of people in this region, and it basically provides the 80% of the annual rainfall. So the drought in the Southeast Asia is basically due to the failure of the summer monsoon. Also, year to year, year variability of the summer monsoon is basically we are linking with the large scale atmospheric and oceanic variability and most, most notably it is due to the only low southern oscillation in so as well as the sea surface temperature impact so basically these are the factors which is affecting uh, the uh, precipitation and which in turn is affecting the drought in the southeast asia Uh, now I am coming to the drought in uh, India. So basically we know that India is a predominantly an agrarian uh, uh, country. So more than 70% of the population is dependent on agriculture. And due to the vagaries of the rainfall, 68% of the net sown area is basically drought prone. Out of which 68% uh, drought prone area, 50% is severe in the nature. So basically, uh, uh, it is affecting a large part of the India frequency on you can see in this map the frequency of drought in India from in 1871 to 1999 you can see that how the large uh, part of the western India how the large part of the western India is be, uh, has uh, uh, affected by the frequency of the drought so basically it is one of the most feared natural calamity uh, calamities in india which is affecting the food production as well as econo uh, economy of the india it has it is basically leading to the crop failure cattle starvation food shortage as well as the employment so it is affecting the Um, I want to show few of the um, uh, few of the picture which has basically affected the drought in the uh, different uh, uh, parts of the India. This is a figure which I am showing is in the June 2003, uh, how the Gujarat was facing the severe drought in 2003. And this is the uh, figure which I am showing is from the uh, in the is uh, from the southern India. Southern India. Uh, the, has faced the drought in 2016 to 18. It was the worst in the 150 years, and it is due to the fail, uh, low in the run, rainfall during the northeast monsoon. So uh, um, this, this drought is basically affecting the human and material loss, which is a major obstacle to attain the sustainable development. And uh, the drought scenario, basically India has a long history of the drought. From 1871 to 2002, India has witnessed 22 droughts, 
um, out of which the five of them was very severe. The drought risk associated with, uh, in India is basically it's a reoccurring feature. And uh, uh, the, I, I have talked to you about the uh, uh, severe drought. In the drought, uh, which has taken place since 1917 and 1918, is, it has basically dried up the river Jhelum in Kashmir. So we, uh, we can see the how much uh, severity the drought is causing. Millions of the peoples have died in uh, uh, famines in India in the 19th to 20th century. I am facing problem in changing the slide. Oh. So basically, uh, now I am uh, coming to the definition. There are the various definitions which has been given by the various organizations, like the World Meteorological Organization, which defines the drought is a sustained extended deficiency in the uh, precipitation, whereas the UN uh, Convention to Combat Drought and Desertification defines that uh, 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 extremely low precipitation below the normal recorded level and it causes the severe hydrological imbalances and it affected the land resource production system. So uh, uh, the various organization has given the defin uh, definitions according to the, uh, according to the uh, their work. Uh, FAO Food and Agricultural Organization defines the drought as a percentage of year when the crop fails from the uh, normal lack of the moisture. Uh, due, to, due to the drought, there is a lack in the moisture and this lack of the moisture is basically affecting the, uh, uh, affecting the crop, uh, crop. So basically drought is a form of hydrological extreme, which is, uh, which is usually characterized um, by deficiency of water in the various component of hydrological cycle, it results in the anomaly in the precipitation and temperature, and it extended over a re region causes a lack of the moisture runoff and the groundwater. Due to its slow development, it is also known as the creeping disaster. Now coming to the impacts of the drought. Drought has a very serious impacts on health, agriculture, economy, energy, as well as the environment. And most importantly, it accelerates the mass migration. 55 million people has basically affected by the drought every year. They are, uh, and water scarcity has impacted 40% of the world population. The uh, approximately 700 million people are at the, are at risk, and uh, which may be dis, uh, um, by the drought of the two, um, which will take place till 2030. And uh, this drought characteristics are very difficult to uh, um, measure because of the is uh, onset, is termination, is intensity, as well as the aerial extent uh, till what extent it will. Uh, it will go and what will be the intensity of the drought. So drought characteristics are very difficult to measure. The, now the uh, complexity in defining the uh, drought identification. There are several methods to identify uh, and it varies from the region to region at, as well as it varies from is a discipline to discipline. Uh, recently, the uh, Mukherjee et al. in 2018, uh, they have, uh, he has characterized the drought into the two categories. One is the conceptual and other is the operational drought. In the conceptual drought, basically, he, uh, um, physical process is basically used like the precipitation, soil moisture, water is declining, the water storage condition. 
whereas in the operational drought definition uh, we are basically focusing on the drought episode drought severity it helps in identifying the onset duration termination and most of the country have basically uh, opted for the conceptual drought definition using the regional rainfall pattern now how imd is declaring the drought IMD is uh, declaring the drought mainly on the rainfall deficiency when the, there is a deficiency of the rainfall in 25% with respect to the long term mean. Uh, so so the, the, um, IMD is basically defining if, uh, if there is a deficiency um, with respect to the mean uh, rainfall, uh, annual rainfall. Along with, the, um, along with this, IMD is using the aridity anomaly index. I, I, um, it is also uh, using the SPI standardization precipitation index. It also uh, uses the summer uh, monsoon rainfall forecast. So in this way, basically the IMD is defining drought in India. Uh, and next, how the World Meteorological Organization is defi uh, uh, defining the drought. Uh, how the is recommending that drought has taken place. So the World Meteorological Organization has basically uh, is basically using the standardization precipitation index and it is based on the precipitation with reference to the rainfall data spanning to uh, at, uh, spanning a minimum of the 30 years. Now I am coming to the drought. Uh, how many types of the drought? There are the four categories of the drought. There had um, one is the meteorological drought, another is hydrological drought, third is the agricultural drought, and the socioeconomic drought. Basically, the meteorological drought is uh, due to deficit in the precipitation when the actual rainfall over a region is less than the 75% of the long-term climate meteorological mean, then we are saying that drought has taken place. And this category is estimated as a region-specific matter because the precipitation varies from the region to region. So basically, uh, in meteorological uh, drought, we are using the precipitation uh, to define the meteorological drought. Now coming to the hydrological drought, when there is a uh, less available water in the surface water resources, and uh, it is due to the basically reduced precipitation event uh, or quantity. The hydrological drought occurs when there is a marked de depletion in the surface water and it causes the low water stream flow drying of the lake, reservoir, as well as in the uh, rivers. Third one is the agricultural drought. The deficiency of water from either meteorological or and hydrological sources ultimately uh, reduces the irrigation water for the crop production. So uh, this water is basically stored in the soil as the soil moisture, which is affected, which is ultimately affected. And if there is a scarce soil moisture, which is present uh, in the um, in the agricultural system, then it will basically lead to the serious crop stress and it will affect the crop productivity. Hence, the agricultural drought refers to the period with the uh, declining soil moisture content and consequently the crop failure. Now, the fourth one is the socioeconomic drought. Socioeconomic drought occurs when the water supply from the regional water resource system cannot meet the water demand. Uh, in this, basically, when the demand for the economic good exceeds the, um, exceeds the supply uh, as a result of the weather-related shortfall, then there is a uh, socioeconomic drought take place. So we can say that 
drought basically starts with the deficit in the precipitation, which leads to the meteorological drought. It is converted into the hydrological drought, as, as well as the same time it is converted into the agricultural drought. So hydrological drought are very important because it directly influences the water supply system, which may lead to the reduced agricultural productivity and this translation of the deficit from the meteorological drought to the hydrological drought is known as the drought propagation. And this drought propagation time is very important because it helps the water manager that how they can solve the condition. And uh, both uh, climate and catchment characteristic is play playing a very vital role in the propagation of the meteorological drought to the hydrological drought. So the uh, propagation time calculation is very important how it is con uh, how it is changing from the meteorological drought to the hydrological drought. Uh, the natural climate, how it is affecting the drought that if there is a uh, deficiency in the precipitation in amount, intensity, as well as timing, then it, there will be the reduced infiltration and reduced in, infiltration will ultimately affect the groundwater recharge. At the same time, if there is a high temperature, high wind velocity, high relative humidity and greater sunshine, so it will increase the uh, increased uh, uh, evapotranspiration and which will this is ultimately uh, leading to the meteorological drought. If there is a meteorological drought, then there will be the less in the soil water deficiency. This soil water deficiency will affect the plant water stress, reduced biomass and L at the it will lead to the agricultural drought. We know that excess water from the root zone when it is going into the aquifer, it is leading to the recharge. So if there is a less in the surface water deficiency, there will be the reduced in, in stream flow inflow to the reservoir, lakes and ponds. And thus in this way, it will affect the economy, social, uh, society as well as the environment. What are the regions uh, which is taking place in the in the uh, Indian subcontinent? So, increased air temperature as well as the weakening of the summer monsoon, it is resulting into the severe and intense drought. Misra and uh, Misra et al. has reported in 2020 that increased air temperature during the post monsoon season is basically accelerating the soil moisture deficit in India and it is leading to the post monsoon uh, season dry and drying due, uh, and, it, and it has taken place from the last uh, 1951 to 200, 2018 so along with the um, along with the natural uh, uh, factors the anthropogenic warming is also significantly contributing to the recent drought because it is affecting the uh, different region Uh, uh, after uh, when the drought is taking pl in place, how we will define uh, the drought has taken place? So uh, we are using the various indices, and this indices is basically a scientific approach for the quantitative estimation of the water water shortage. Various method and indices has been developed by the various scientists uh, by using the drought causative parameters, by using the drought responsive parameters. The drought causative parameters are the rainfall, whereas the drought responsive parameters, if the drought has taken place, are the soil moisture, potential evapotranspiration, vegetation condition, groundwater, surface water level. So uh, various indices has been developed uh, by using this draws positive and drought responsive parameters. Uh, these indices are, are basically providing us the real time drought monitoring, uh, drought monitoring and forecasting condition in India. So the various indices are being used for the uh, um, providing the well, um, uh, various indices are used uh, to quantify the drought.
metrological rod and it basically gives the draw, uh, degree it considers the degree of dryness duration of the dry period as well as the atmospheric condition and there are the various indices which are basically used for defining the meteorological drought uh, one is the normalized deviation another is the dryness index d martin index pluvothermic quotient aridity index a standardization precipitation index there are the very uh, for, uh, there are various indices to define the meteorological drought uh, and I am not going in details how this indicer is being calculated. Now I am coming to the hydrological drought. This index uh, considers those period of the time when both the natural as well as the managed water system fails to provide enough water to meet the human and environmental demands. So there will be the natural sort. Uh, it is due to the natural shortfall in the precipitation or due to the stream flow. Uh, so the, there are three indices which basically defines the hydrological drought and the water budget method, uh, surface water in uh, supply index method and reclamation drought index method. There are the three indices through which we are basically defining the uh, uh, basically defining the uh, drought. Uh, now, uh, role of the remote sensing and geoinformatics uh, in the uh, application system for the drought mo monitoring and assessment. Uh, due to its accurate, efficient, and reliable information on drought hazard, which uh, especially due to its spatial as well as the temporal coordinates and its attribute to, uh, which is very important to communicate the potential risk as well as the vulnerable part. Remote sensing and uh, GIS has been widely used for the uh, defining its spatial and temporal coordinates. A number of satellites is basically used uh, for weather for um, forecasting, earth observation, monitoring, as well as the assessment. And these are the various uh, um, satellite system which is being used for the prediction, vegetation cover monitoring, early warning system, drought information monitoring, drought management uh, for the drought management purposes. And uh, uh, along with the uh, uh, satellite, the GIS is basically providing a, uh, a wider application for merging the cartography, statistical analysis, and database technology. So basically, remote sensing and GIS is giving a very good uh, platform for uh, this type of the disaster risk management. Now, drought management and challenges. We know that uh, uh, if there is a drought, it, uh, the, uh, it is mostly due to the uh, unsustainable um, land and water management practices, which is basically uh, main cul culprit for the water shortage and it is uh, leading to the intensification in both the you know, developing and the developed nation. So unsustainable land and water management practices are basically main culprit. So the goal of risk management is to promote the adoption of preventive preventive as well as, or uh, you can say that risk reducing mechanism. And this strategy will mitigate the impact of the future drought events and thereby reducing the society, vulnerability of the society. And uh, this uh, this can be done by the, uh, how you are, you have prepared, you, ha you, are, uh, you have adopted the different mitigation measure. And for this, we need the early warning system. So how the government is using uh, how the government is uh, using this uh, um, how the government is using that drought has taken places. Uh, so basically, uh, the different agencies are working on this. So first, they are identifying the risk of vulnerability, which which basically extends with the period of the water shortage. And uh, we, we need to understand the temporal and spatial variation of the hazard. And this basically requires the comprehensive drought early warning system. And this drought early warning system reduce the uh, uh, will help to reduce the uh, uh, serious consequence of the drought. And this early warning system is basically cooperate the, all the variables 
uh, it incorporates the climatic variables, soil and water supply variables. And uh, this, this is basically collecting all the data and it is giving information to the government and the nodal agency basically coordinates the information and analyze it uh, prior to taking the declaration of the drought, uh, drought warnings. So uh, next is how we will uh, how we will prepare and how we will manage our drought. Uh, the, in the drought management, the four steps are basically uh, four steps are involved. How you are uh, drought preparedness, drought mitigation, drought response, and drought recovery. Drought uh, pre in drought preparedness, basically we are establishing policies and a specific plans and before the drought drought is taking place and in a uh, next in a next step we are preparing the people we are enhancing our institutional and coping capacity and the third is to forecast or warn about the approaching danger uh, we have to for, we are going to we are forecasting to the our people that this is going to take place and uh, uh, this uh, this is going to be the situation uh, so it is very important how you are preparing your population to uh, uh, about a particular danger. So uh, establishing the policy in a specific plan and preparing your people and enhancing the uh, institutional and coping capacity is very important for any kind of the disaster pre preparation. Next is the their drought mitigation in which we are uh, uh, basically uh, a structural and physical measures uh, we are strengthening our structural and physical measures like if there is a drought in which in that particular time which type uh, of the crop we will use but uh, how many dams will be prepared for, so that we can store the water uh, before the drought has uh, taken place and all the engineering projects as well as the non-structural measure, both a structural and non-structural measure uh, will be taken uh, to uh, in, uh, limit the adverse impact of the drought. In a non-structural measure, policy awareness, knowledge development, public commitment is very important. So uh, and for the drought mitigation, both a structural and non-structural measures is required and, and only then we can limit the adverse impact of the drought. Next, next is the drought response. Effort uh, such as uh, when the drought has taken place, how uh, you are providing assistance to your population. It is very important to meet the life preservation as well as the basic uh, subsidence need for the those people who has affected. It can be uh, yeah, this it, it can be immediate or it can be the long term. You can you can provide the uh, immediate uh, immediate uh, uh, help to them or it you can uh, it can be the uh, after uh, even after the disaster has taken place you are providing say, help to the your population at, uh, for few more months to uh, to uh, to uh, adverse that impact. And next is the drought recovery. Uh, in the drought recovery, decision and action taken after a drought with a view to restoring and improving the pre-drought living condition. Uh, once the drought has taken place, uh, so uh, after the drought uh, has gone, how we will restore our uh, uh, living condition, which was uh, earlier than uh, uh, drought has taken place. So basically, we uh, we are uh, taking the various decision to facilitate the necessary adjustment to reduce the drought risk. So drought preparation, drought mitigation, drought uh, restoration. Uh, and drought recovery. These are the very important for the uh, for the uh, drought risk management. The ne next is the relief measure what the government of India is providing. A state government in India has uh, um, in different state government. The government of India um, state government has made a manual relief manual or code with the dis prescribed role. What the each government, each government uh, department will do when the uh, drought will take place. So they have given the codes 
and that this particular department will do this for during the natural disaster. Then there is a calamity relief fund which has been set up in each state according to recommendation of the 11th Finance Commission. Calamity relief fund was uh, set up. And uh, then there is a na national calamity contingency fund which is created by the central government is also providing fund to the state government. Uh, so we can see that how the government of India is providing the funds to the different state to uh, uh, to combat the disaster. And the uh, uh, institutional framework in uh, institutional framework which has been established by the government of India. So the drought management group, it is under the chairmanship of the cabinet secretary to coordinate the efforts to deal with the droughts in the dairy, uh, various states. There is another the national disaster management sale which monitor the drought situation in different states as well as the resource availability. And the third is the National Center for the Climate Management. It is the under uh, under the Ministry of Agriculture. It basically monitors the all types of the climate and make recommendations. Now I'm taking a case study, uh, how the remote sensing and GIS can uh, help uh, uh, to monitor the drought dynamics for a longer time. This, uh, this is a study which uh, is uh, basically done in the Aravali region, uh, where the, um, both the drought and remote sensing, ground and remote sensing data has been used by the authors. The work has been done by the C. Um, Bhuya et al. And uh, you can see this is the Aravali region. You know that Aravali region uh, is basically uh, the temperature is where uh, precipitation is varying. So according to uh, in 2003, there was a severe drought there. So basically the, the uh, authors has used the remote sensing and GIS for the drought dynamics. They have used the SPI index SWI index and VHI index. Uh, so SPI index is a standardization precipitation index and then the water index and then is the vegetation health index has been used by the to classify about the situation there. So you can see they have uh, um, basically done for a long term data analysis for both the pre monsoon and monsoon season. So you can see the how uh, the agricultural, uh, the uh, meteorological drought has affected the uh, uh, hydrological drought and which in turn has affected the well, uh, vegetation health condition. So by using the remote sensing and GIS, you can very, uh, very nicely measure the drought dynamics and it will help you in the assessment of what are the drought areas and then you can basically respond to the management in that particular part. So in my uh, conclusion, I, I'm just, uh, there are very, very little conclusion that uh, the time series map of different drought uh, uh, thematic maps, uh, it uh, revealed that good correlation among the meteorological, hydrological and vegetative droughts. And uh, therefore, the speed of the drought development, drought duration, and as well as its identification, classification, and the total dynamics ca uh, can be monitored by using the remote sensing and DIS, and it will help you in the mitigation. Thank you. Thank you, Vinita. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. That was a wonderful uh, presentation on the topic. Uh, there are certain questions that are raised by the participants. The first question that is raised uh, is uh, from Mr. Suman Kumar Jha. Uh, uh, the person is asking that how to cater drought-prone area issues in Bihar for sustainable development. Uh, Suman, which area you want to take in Bihar? Like mm -hmm. uh, in Bihar, uh, we have, uh, we, this is in the part of the Indo-Gangetic Plain. And uh, every year we are listening that uh, uh, flood is taking place. 
so uh, in uh, i don't know the, what the uh, bihar government has taken but uh, in every uh, every state we have the the disaster management sale and uh, not only the flood they are taking care of the droughts so so i think uh, from last so many year i am just listening that koshi is flooding and the ganga is flooding and there is a flood uh, for the again in um, uh, if you want to take this type of the uh, work uh, you can choose that work and you can see how the precipitation has varied in that particular region in a long term uh, uh, and also you can uh, you can take the groundwater data uh, like groundwater depth data and you can see the how the declination has taken place and you can also take the various satellite indices uh, vegetation health indices to monitor how they have changed over a long period uh, and the time series analysis is very important um, particularly right now i cannot tell you that what the government of bihar has done but of course this can be used at all the places if you want to go for the drought dynamics you have to use all the thematic maps to classify uh, to classify at which region in, uh, the drought is taking place uh, according to according to the classification map okay uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, the another question is asked by mr kunal joshi he is asking that uh, what is a change in drought condition in the last 3 to 4 decades in india Mm, last two four last three to four decades of course india is uh, 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 like uh, we are seeing that uh, mm, uh, precipitation is changing like uh, i just now i have to uh, show you in the slide 2016 and 2018 the south, southern india is suffering the drought due to the uh, ch change in the uh, post monsoon se season Uh, moisture content, moisture content, and it, it is due to the less in the northeast monsoon rainfall. The mo northeast monsoon rainfall is decreasing in the southern India, which we were knowing that uh, southern India was getting the sufficient monsoon uh, post monsoon rainfall. Now this rainfall is decreasing, which is ultimately converted into the uh, uh, soil dryness, and it is affecting the. the crop and as as well as the vegetation health condition all uh, right ma'am uh, another question is asked by kalika mupatra she is asking that uh, <clears throat> what is the methodology that is followed by the government of india for uh, declaration of drought and uh, what are the uh, mechanism for drought response recovery plans that are available in the country uh drought recovery plan uh, i have told you the different agencies are uh, is in, involved to give the re uh, relief major uh, in uh, if there is a drought and what are the plan uh, and how they are declaring the drought you have seen that if there is a change in the precipitation uh, uh, 25% uh, uh, change in the precipitation from the normal mean precipitation they are basically Uh, defining the drought and uh, again in the for the drought you have you are, we are um, basically integrating all the factors like precipitation the change in the uh, change in the soil moisture condition uh, as well as the change in the um, uh, water uh, water table there as well as change in the uh, vegetation health condition there so these are basically used by used and it is uh, agri the agricultural department is doing all this to declare the drought and uh, imd is helping in this uh, ma'am she is also asking that uh, what is the risk reduction mechanism that uh, that will help in minimizing the risk of drought in india how to minimize the risk of drought basically how to uh, minimize the risk of uh, risk of drought basically uh, 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 when the drought has taken place and uh, uh, you ha you have to basically at that particular kind you have to go for the uh, different types of the crops are uh, the earlier which were drought resistant crop you can use and uh, uh, you government of india is trying to basically like uh, right now in the maharashtra region lot lots of parts uh, is suffering from the drought every year 
So government of India is basically trying to uh, give the water facility there through the various sources. So in this way, the government of India is trying to help them. <clears throat> thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Uh, these questions were very well explained. Uh, now we will move on to the uh, last session, which is the veredictory. Uh, the veredictory address will be given by Professor Arva Hiranmay. She is the Dean of School of Environment and Sustainable Development. Uh, <clears throat> um, as far as ma'am is concerned, she has uh, obtained her PhD in Life Sciences uh, from University of uh, Abhi, uh, Abhina Shilingam, University for Women, Coimbatore, and she has also been working as a quality control in pharmaceutical industry. Uh, she started her career as assist assistant professor at Karpagam University, Coimbatore, followed by teaching and research at School of Natural Resource Management and Environmental Sciences, Haranmaya University, Ethiopia, and she uh, came back to India as assistant professor at Abhina Shalingam University for Women, Coimbatore. During her career, she also visited different countries for attending and presenting research papers at conferences and congress. <clears throat> During the career, she uh, has been actively involved in research through guidance, projects, and presentations and publications in the field of re bioremediation to worming technology and organic farming to improve soil and crop quality. She has also been giving more emphasis to the research related to soil quality, solid waste management, through bioconversion and organic farming. Sustainable practices of waste management and organic farming for, for soil fertility and crop production is a thrust area of research for ma'am. Uh, she also served as the administrative responsibility of presiding officer of ICC Central University of Gujarat, Gandhinagar, Gujarat in India. She has also been actively involved in NSS, ES, uh, EBSB and academic and extracurricular activities as far as the university is concerned. She's also organized many national conferences and symposia and international conferences, workshops and webinars. I would like to invite ma'am for the valediction uh, address. Uh, thank you, Ms. Vinita. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, uh, congratulating you and your team and also all the participants who have actively participated. It's an initiative we know that's going nationwide and uh, generating knowledge about the hazards or we can say risks and also the management strategies that we can adapt. So the event we started very really initially from three days, we can say we started with an objective and I hope the participants could achieve that objective very well. So we had various uh, speakers, eminent speakers from various fields and various uh, states of India working in different uh, fields of their expertise. On. So they have shared uh, all their views, also their experiences and the knowledge that is available to the community. So we, could, we can thank both the patrons, Sri Taj Hassan, as well as Professor Ramashankar Dubey, sir, who is Vice Chancellor of Central University of Gujarat, and uh, all the speakers, and a special note for Ms. Vinita, who is uh, guiding and also, we can say, the charioteer of this whole event. So starting with the technical session, one we started with Dr. Abhishek Chakraborty, who is the scientist engineer. We discussed on the satellite-based assessment of agricultural drought. So we discussed on uh, drought and its occurrence and various types of droughts that we face every year across the globe, and how the drought is affecting the individual lives, and how we can come across and manage these situations. As we discuss about the resilience or the mitigation, here again we have to think of those. The other discussion was by Dr. Dhruv Sen, who is Professor of Geology from University of Lucknow. He discussed on the climate change effects on heat waves in Indian cities. So he talked about various dimensions. The climate change is covering the evolution of Earth. We can say that the life or the biodiversity, how it's getting evolved and how it's affected and how it's managing and going through the equilibrium of various environmental systems. 
and specifically he discussed the definition and causes of heat waves and the future action plans that are required that's of most significance then we had uh, dr harjit Paul, who discussed upon discussed upon the landslides so the landslides and GIS based landslide susceptibility mapping. So the, how the mapping can be done and the risk can be reduced. Or we can say always we say about the risks, but the property loss that we face or the human lives and the biodiversity, you know, we can sustain. So all these vulnerability mapping was discussed with terms of social aspects, sensitivity, resilience, and standard technologies for this. Then we move on to the next technical session where Professor G. Bhaskaran from Chennai joined us. And he has discussed on the geospatial technology for flood assessment. We know India is facing flood in different regions and it's affecting not only the human lives, but the entire land use patterns. And this also affects the productivity. Then we had Dr. Kakoli Banerjee, who is from Central University of Odisha who discussed on cyclones, we know the most prone state of cyclones is Odisha in India. It had a very good mangrove system that was helping, but the human activities or the anthropogenic system, how it have affected those uh, barrier belts and how it's uh, affecting the livelihoods. Then we had Ajit Bhatham who discussed on different disaster management and preparedness. That's the most important factor that we need to attend, how we can be prepared for an emergency conditions. And on the third sec technical session, we had Dr. Himanshu Shekhar Mandal, who is scientist from NCS MOES. He also has discussed on the earthquake, disaster, risk mitigation, and preparedness implication on smart community infrastructure. So here then he discussed about the components of earthquake and specifically of Indian system and also how the tracing and recording can be done. And this will give the earthquake risk resilient structures and micro zonation of Indian cities. So most of the hilly zones of India which is getting affected can be or managed or reduced the risk at least. And finally, we had Dr. Rina Kumari from Central University of uh, Gujarat, who is also a uh, convener of this uh, program or the coordinator. She has give, explained about the various uh, drought aspect or the drought disaster that is occurring. And we know that uh, the climate change, environment, anthropogenic activity, and the drought, these are all related factors and how it's affecting the framework of India. So we also have to think about what could be the policy and plans, mitigation strategies that we can adapt, operations and communications, how the information technology can help us, and also the administration. So we know that the government of India is helping through various schemes. And that's why we have these uh, events that's being managed through the NIDM throughout India so that the awareness can be created and the risks and also the risks can be reduced and preparedness can be increased. So I hope those all those participants are well benefited from this and we can uh, pass it on to the more community or the society and uh, prepare for a better future. We, here we have discussed only the disasters, but we know that the Natural disasters and man-made disasters, they are going parallelly at a higher level nowadays. So we need the uh, not only the technology, but the mindset of people, how we can manage it to reduce the deforestation pattern or the construction need to be monitored. So with all these, uh, I think this, the online training of three days was uh, very productive and useful for all the participants. And best wishes to all the participants who have joined and a note of acknowledgement to all the speakers and eminent participants we were here and also the coordinators, both the coordinators are highly appreciated in this 
both uh, Ms. Vinita Kumari, who is a young professional from NIDM, and uh, Dr. Rina Kumari from Central University of Gujarat. So, best wishes and thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for the valedictory address. Uh, now we will conclude the event. Uh, before I uh, continue for continue with the vote of thanks, uh, there are certain queries of the participants that I would like to clarify. Uh, the participants after the completion of the course are requested to kindly uh, submit the feedback form and the uh, attendances will be automatically uploaded. Post that, uh, they will be able to uh, download the certificates. The only criteria that will be followed in this case is that 60% of the minimum attendance criteria has to be completed. If in case uh, that is not completed or uh, fulfilled, the uh, certificates will not be generated for those particular participants. So uh, now uh, we would like to move on to the vote of thanks. Um, <clears throat> uh, I would like to thank and extend my gratitude to our esteemed panelists for the valuable views on the topic. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, to Hiran Bhai, ma'am. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, valedictory uh, address from you. Uh, I would also like to thank the executive director, NIDM, and head uh, GMR division for the support and guidance for the conduct of this three days online training program. Uh, and I would also like to thank all the participants present without whom this event would not have been possible. And last but not the least, I would like to thank uh, the GMR division, Dr. Hadid Kaur, Hari, Ajit, Jay, and Sri Haldar, sir, along with the IT support team of Shobhit and Balaji. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, let us conclude the event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vinita, for nice uh, uh, communication with the uh, attendees as well as the nice uh, conduction of the program. Thank you so much that uh, NIDM has given this opportunity to CUG to conduct this program. Hope we, hope we will meet in the future again. Surely, ma'am. Thank, sure. so, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Bye.